Hey guys, Rumblin' Man here. Every once in a while, Squire will release a bass or a guitar that just absolutely blows me away. Is this bass one of them? We're gonna find out today in my full review of the Squire Classic Vibe 70s five string jazz bass. Stay with me. So guys, real quick, I just want to say welcome. I'm Rumblin' Man, and the Rumblin' Man channel is a guitar and bass channel where we look at guitars, basses, etc., and related gear, tutorials, things like that. And we have a great community here, so if this is your first time, I'd like to welcome you and invite you to go on and click the subscribe button uh, so that you can see all my videos when they come out. If you love Squire basses and things like that, you're going to love this channel. To my regular viewers, subscribers, patrons, and insiders, welcome back. We're going to have a lot of fun in this video today as we're looking at a super cool bass. The Squire Classic Vibe Series has always kind of astounded me. You know, like I mentioned in one of my recent videos when I uh, took a look at the 70s P bass from the Squire Classic Vibe line, uh, I once had a Squire Classic Vibe bass that I absolutely loved. And every time I pick one up, uh, I'm pretty impressed. You know, Squire used to be known for having three series, which was the Affinity, um, the Vintage Modified, and the Classic Vibe, the Classic Vibe being really up there. Uh, Squire used to also have a lot of signature models, but things have changed quite a bit with the line. And at this moment in time, Squire actually only has three five-string basses out there. And of those three, only two are five-string passive jazz basses. One of them is the Squire Affinity Jazz Bass 5 that's on the wall behind me, and the other is this really beautiful classic vibe five string jazz. Now in a future video, we're gonna put the two up against each other, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But today we are just gonna go in and dive in and take a look at this bass. You heard it just now, some finger style playing on the B string and the other strings, and we're gonna have several other demos for you today. <laughs> Some of these classic vibe basses by Squire absolutely nail the 60s and 70s vibes. Uh, others of them get pretty close. Uh, how do I feel about this one? I'm going to tell you toward the end of the video. Now a Squire bass a lot like this one that used to be on the market was the Squire Vintage Modified 5 string jazz bass. And as you can see, you know, it really looked a lot like this one. Uh, but it went through some phases of change. You know, when it originally came out, um, the Vintage Modified had, you know, some Duncan design pickups. Uh, later they had Squire's own pickups. Pickups uh, it went through a couple cosmetic changes, but that bass has been discontinued, and I can't help but feel that this particular uh, five-string '70s style jazz bass uh, is kind of something that came from taking a good look at that old vintage modified bass and making some enhancements to make it an even nicer instrument. <laughs> As you can see in this picture, you know, 70s style jazz basses, or what some call vintage style, referring to the 70s, uh, were actually different looking than, say, 60s style jazz basses, or even modern jazz basses. Uh, there's something to the body that's a little different in shape. Uh, the pickups are spaced differently, which can give you kind of a cool, uh, very snappy, high-end vintage tone in the bridge position. There are also differences with the neck and the truss rod adjustment. 
adjustment up at the nut. What Squire's Classic Vibe series does is essentially the same thing that Fender's Ventera series does. Uh, with the Ventera series basses, they take one bass, they look at the whole decade, and they say, okay, what from that decade is definitive? So to concoct a 70s jazz bass, as I mentioned in my review of the Fender Ventera series uh, 70s jazz bass, they kind of take a lot of highlights from that decade. So they take the best of the decade and kind of compile it all into one bass that is supposed to give you that feel, that vibe, and that sound that was so sought after uh, in the bass of whatever decade. And in this particular case, you know, jazz basses were all the rage in the 70s. It was also in the 70s, you know, disco era where our ears were really getting familiar with slap bass playing and the slap and pop that you could get, you know, and the really nice trebly sounds that you can get coming from the jazz bass. And that comes from the pickups. So most jazz basses are defined by having two pickups, which consist of a bridge pickup and then also a front pickup, which is technically the middle pickup. Now the pickups in this bass are some Fender designed Alnico single coil jazz bass pickups. And can they get the slap and pop sounds that were popular in the 70s? Well, let's find out. I'm going to do a little slap style playing on this bass. And what we're going to do first is we're going to listen to the bass being slapped with both pickups on. That's kind of how I like to hear it for slap style playing. And then after that, we're going to dial it down. We're going to take out the front pickup and we're going to listen to just the bridge pickup slapped and see how it sounds. I'll see you in just a sec. So pretty cool. It does sound a lot like the 70 sounds you can get. And honestly, it's not unfriendly to modern music at all. In fact, let's listen to each one of the pickup positions. I'm going to play some finger style playing and we're going to start with the front pickup and then we're going to move on to both pickups at the same time, which is my personal favorite jazz bass tone. And then we're going to move on to the bridge pickup. This is going to allow our ears just to listen to each one of the pickup positions on this bass to try to hear if they are ideal for the kind of music we want to make. Now, 
Now, a four string version of this bass does exist if you want to get this bass, but don't prefer having the fifth B string. Uh, but I really like the versatility you can get uh, with a bass like this. In fact, I did some recording with this just a couple days ago, and man, I'd love to have a bass like this for recording. They sound absolutely great. So what a five string bass does, if you don't already know, is it adds a fifth string above the usual strings, which is the low B string. And it can sound really cool in a rock mix. Um, you know, guys that are metal players come to me all the time, hey, should I get this jazz bass for metal playing? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of jazz basses are used in metal and heavy rock playing. So let's do a demo real quick, not only to where you can hear this in a heavier rock mix, but also where you can hear the B string used quite a bit in a heavier rock mix. I'm going to add some amp cab simulation. I'm going to add, uh, blend in a little bit of distortion and play in one of my mixes. And let's take a listen to how this sounds for that kind of music. So obviously some very cool tones. So what do I think? Does this bass, is this one of the Squires that blow me away or is it just kind of average? Honestly, for me, yeah, I actually am pretty blown away by this because think about this. If it costs around $429, you know, obviously it bears the name Squire uh, on the headstock. But to me, in this case, that's not a bad thing because this is a really nice bass. I mean, the one that came before it, the Vintage Modified, was one of Squire's most popular basses ever. Uh, and this classic vibe just takes it up to another level. It feels great to play. Obviously, five strings, you're going to have a wider neck, but the neck is finished in a very nice gloss, which is not too thick of a gloss. It's it's pretty thinly coated on parts of it. Almost feels more like a semi-gloss. I love the way the tuners are positioned on the headstock. The pickups sound great, and if you're not digging the tone from the pickups, you can always upgrade pickups uh, you know, to another brand, and it just doesn't cost a fortune to do that. There are lots of good deals out there. Cosmetically, I really think this bass both holds up to the vintage standard. You know, even though I haven't exactly seen a lot of five string jazz basses from the 1970s, it does have that vintage feel to it. Like it's a new instrument from the seventies. You know, to me, it does kind of nail that vibe. And in addition to that, I think it could be a workhorse and a road warrior. Honestly, I've reviewed some of the Squire basses in which I felt like they didn't necessarily feel like they could hold up for years and years of use on the road. Uh, but I would have no hesitation about gigging live in town with this bass. And I would have no hesitation about going on the road with this bass. It feels like it could really be a solid workhorse uh, that would be just a joy to play for years and years of touring. Upgrades that I personally would make if I had one would be I'd probably upgrade these pickups, uh, you know, to some of my favorite five string jazz bass pickups. And I would probably at some point upgrade the bridge, maybe do something high mass. Uh, but other than that, I see really nothing here that needs to be changed. Uh, I mean, this is really an excellent bass. So do you have my endorsement on getting one? Absolutely. You know what? If you're trying to convert to playing five strings, you don't exactly spend a fortune on this bass and you still get great performance. So I absolutely recommend checking one of these out, uh, as well as the other basses in Squire's Classic Vibe series. It's a great series of basses and guitars. I've really liked the products I tried and I'm looking forward to hopefully reviewing more. Are there more Classic Vibe products you would like to see? Do you have any experience with this bass or the basses that came before it? I'd love to chat gear with you in the comments of this video, so go on and leave me a comment. Uh, also, if you enjoyed today's video and demos and review, go on and give me the thumbs up button so that YouTube will be more likely to recommend my video in searches which will help me out by getting more views. Okay, I also invite you to become a subscriber. It totally helps me. We just crossed, uh, just days ago, 6,000 subs. And that is such a blessing from above uh, to me. And 
I am so grateful for that, and I have every intention to continue reviewing products, so stick here with me on the Rumble Man channel, okay? Uh, I'm also on Patreon if you would like to get involved on a deeper level and become an insider and uh, get special vlog updates and stuff. That option is there, but it is not uh, in any way required, and it's not something that I pressure anyone to do because my goal is for you to be blessed by the content that we make here on the Rumbling Man channel. So thanks so much for checking out this video today, guys. I really appreciate it. God bless you, and I will see you on the next one, all right? Peace.